Alfred I. DuPont. Alfred Irony DuPont, May 12, 1864, April 28, 1935, was an American industrialist, financier, philanthropist, and a member of the influential DuPont family. Alfred DuPont first rose to prominence through his work in his family's Delaware based gunpowder manufacturing plant, E.I. DuPont Denemers and Company, now known as DuPont in which for many years he served as a director of the board and vice president of operations. Following an acrimonious departure and a brief dip in personal fortunes, he embarked on business of his own, investing in land and banking in Florida. He died a multimillionaire, with the bulk of his fortune sustaining the Alfred I. DuPont Testamentary Trust. Early Years DuPont was born in the Brandywine Valley region of Delaware, to which his great-great-grandfather Pierre Samuel DuPont de Nemers had immigrated with his sons after the French Revolution. The son of Iluther Irony, DuPont Roman II, a partner in the DuPont family gunpowder business, and Charlotte Shepard Henderson, he had two older sisters and two younger brothers. When DuPont was thirteen, his mother, who had a history of mental illness, was committed to an asylum following an episode of hysteria. Within a week, she died. The DuPont children were orphaned a month later when Iluther followed, a victim of tuberculosis. DuPont's family intended to separate the children and sell their family home, Swamp Hall, but were persuaded otherwise by the fierce resistance of the children. The girls remained in the home, but DuPont was sent to boarding school first, to the Religious Shin Academy in New Jersey and then, two years later, Phillips Academy at Andover, Massachusetts. After graduation, he enrolled in the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, sharing a room with his cousin T. Coleman DuPont. Family Business In 1884, after only two years at MIT, he left to work at the family's gunpowder manufacturing plant in the Brandywine Mills. Though he started in a low position, he eventually became known, according to the Alfred I. DuPont Foundation, as one of the nation's top powder men. Most of the over 200 patents he registered were related to this work. DuPont married his cousin Bessie Gardner, 1864-1949, in 1887, and she was the mother of his first four children. In 1889, the manufacturing plant passed to the management of Eugene DuPont, at which time it was reorganized and renamed E. I. DuPont de Nemers and Company, and DuPont was made a limited partner. Beyond that, Eugene DuPont and other family members largely ignored DuPont, excluding him from the company board. In 1902, upon the death of Eugene DuPont, the three senior partners considered selling the company to competitor Laughlin and Rand Powder Company. DuPont proposed keeping the company in the family, and the senior partners agreed on condition that DuPont be joined in the venture by T. Coleman DuPont, who would be president, and Pierre S. DuPont. They had no money, but the cousins were able to convince other family members to exchange their company shares for a promissory note, instead of cash, plus shares in the reorganized company. According to the trust organization, the company was purchased for $15, four cents million twelve dollars million in notes and thirty three thousand shares of the reorganized dupont with the partners retaining eight dollars six cents million worth of shares eighty six thousand four hundred the actual amount of money which the partners were required to pay was twenty one hundred dollars at seven hundred dollars each for lawyers fees pierre dupont was named treasurer and executive vice president of the company while Alfred DuPont served as vice president for operations and took over the black powder manufacture and sat on the executive committee. Alfred was directly engaged with the company and instituted major changes to its operation that resulted in greater efficiency and safety, leading to a boom in business. Divorce and Remarriage During this period, DuPont was involved in a hunting accident that would eventually cost him an eye. The same year, 1906, he divorced his first wife, Bessie. The couple's marriage had never been a happy one, 
and although DuPont supported his family financially, with $24,000 a year in support, he cut off contact with all but his eldest child, Madeline DuPont. With a week's eviction notice, he removed them from the family home at Swamp Hall and had it destroyed. This, coupled with DuPont's remarriage to a divorced second cousin in 1907, seriously strained relations between DuPont and other members of his family. DuPont's relationship with his second wife, Mary Alicia Hayward Bradford, 1875-1920, had already been the subject of family scandal, as family members had remarked on the close relationship of the two even before Alicia Bradford's marriage to DuPont's secretary. Maddox and his wife lived close to DuPont and were frequently visited by him, DuPont and Bradford, who had borne a daughter in the meantime, left their spouses at around the same time, and were married two weeks after Bradford's divorce was final. DuPont's adoption of Bradford's daughter, Alicia Maddox, brought fresh gossip to the family, who largely rallied in support of his first wife. DuPont gave Bradford a new home built on 300 acres, 1.2 km2 in Wilmington, Delaware. Construction of the Nemers Mansion and Gardens occurred between 1909 and 1910. The mansion is a five-story, 77-room, 47,000 SQFT 4,402 structure that was designed by renowned architects Carrer and Hastings, who also designed the New York Public Library, New York City's Frick Mansion, and Whitehall, the Henry Flagler Museum in Palm Beach, Florida. The building looks like a French chateau, and the architectural style is Louis Roman XVI. The estate was named after the French town affiliated with his ancestor, Pierre Samuel Dupont de Nemers. Within the short time of the marriage, Bradford bore two children for Dupont, neither of whom survived long. Lawsuit and Departure from E. I. Dupont de Nemers Through the early 1910s, Alfred Dupont was engaged in fierce debate over the future of the family's business with Coleman and Pierre Dupont, whose support for Dupont's first wife had extended to building her and her children a home after their eviction from Swamp Hall. The struggle became bitter after Coleman Dupont decided to leave the company for health concerns in 1914. As he was departing ill and in need of money for another business transaction, Coleman Dupont decided to sell 20,000 shares in the company to key company employees. But when Alfred Dupont and Pierre Dupont disagreed on the proper pricing and handling of the transaction, wound up selling considerably more shares, over 77,000 shares combined of common. This secret and swift transaction gave Pierre Dupont 60% ownership of Dupont Securities, considerable control over the family business. While the value of the shares greatly increased due to the success of the company during World War I, Alfred Dupont and other minority shareholders launched a lawsuit against Pierre Dupont alleging that he had acted as an agent of the E.I. DuPont de Nemers Company, who should be rightful holders of the shares. The suit was extremely well publicized and acrimonious. In 1916, shortly after company shareholders voted to remove Alfred DuPont from its board of directors, the United States District Court found that Pierre DuPont had operated in bad faith ordering a stockholder vote to determine if the stockholders aside from those who owned the disputed shares wished to purchase the disputed shares. By a share ratio of 33, 13 shareholders did not, and accordingly, in 1918, the court dismissed the action. Alfred DuPont brought an appeal which ended unsuccessfully in March 1919. No longer involved in running EA, and DuPont and Nemers DuPont instead began to invest in newspapers, as a publisher of which he successfully opposed T. Coleman DuPont's bid for presidency and Henry A. DuPont's third run for Senate. According to the DuPont Trust, he also established an investment firm Nemers Trading Corporation and an import-export business in New York and acquired a majority interest in the Delaware Trust Company. Widowed and Third Marriage a bad business transaction had left him nearly bankrupt when, in January 1920, 
His second wife died. Missing an eye since his earlier accident, he was now also nearly deaf. But his life was about to change with his third marriage. Dupont had been corresponding with Jesse Ball, twenty years his junior, since the time of their meeting in 1898, when she was fourteen. By 1920, Ball was an assistant principal at an elementary school in San Diego, California, and Dupont began courting her, at the same time divesting himself of assets and cutting back on spending. He wed Ball on January 22, 1921, and the couple returned to the East Coast to settle into Nemers. The couple had no children of their own, but Ball Dupont accepted young Denise, a child Dupont had fostered with his second wife as her own. She also helped mend rifts between Dupont and the estranged children of his first marriage. Ball Dupont proved to be a great assistance to him, as well in his work as did her younger brother. Edward Ball and Dupont hit it off, and Edward Ball began working for his brother-in-law in 1923, moving to Delaware where he was publicly named manager of the Clean Food Products Company. There, he became a caretaker of the Dupont de Nemers estate fortune. Relocation and Later Life Dupont and his third wife had already made several trips to Florida on their motor yacht, Nenemusha, when Pierre Dupont was named tax commissioner of Delaware in 1925. Harboring hard feelings against his cousin, Alfred Dupont and Jesse Ball Dupont moved to Jacksonville, Florida, in 1926, where they established permanent residency. There, Dupont purchased 58 acres, 230,000 in two of land on the St. John's River, and built a 25-room mansion and landscaped grounds, as well as a berth for the couple's motor yacht. Ball Dupont named the estate Epping Forest, after the Virginia plantation of Mary Ball Washington, George Washington's mother and Ball Dupont's relative. Edward Ball, too, relocated to Florida to continue working with Dupont. In Florida, Dupont made primarily small real estate investments at first, correctly fearing a drop in real estate values before turning his attention to acquiring interest in banks. He acquired an interest in Florida National Bank FNB of Jacksonville, keeping it solvent during a bank run of 1929 by putting $15 million of his own money into an account. During the early 1930s, six other Florida national banks were opened throughout Florida, including Lakeland and Bartow. During this time, DuPont was expanding his philanthropic activities. He personally funded a pension plan program for seniors in Delaware in 1929 and turned his attention to revitalizing Florida after the devastation of a 1926 hurricane and the Great Depression. Other Activities Besides his interest in business, DuPont was an accomplished and passionate violinist and composer. Using friends and his factory workers from E.I., DuPont and De Nemers and Company, he formed an orchestra that was named the Tankapanica Musical Club. According to the DuPont Trust, DuPont published nine pieces of music during his lifetime, eight marches and one gavotte, a French peasant dance, which was performed at the Grand Opera House in Wilmington in 1907. John Philip Sousa, who was a friend, performed one of his marches. Death and Legacy, 1929-1930 